Welcome back to the Busy Bench Modeler. All right, we got a kit unboxing here today for ICM's Model 1914 fire truck. Uh, my first fire truck, and uh, I, I am a firefighter by profession, and I'm surprised it's taken me this long to purchase a uh, fire tr truck kit, but I figured let's go old school and start there before picking up something more modern. So, um, in addition to being my first fire truck, this is my first ICM brand model. So I'm really excited about trying uh, a, a different product. I did uh, a few different ones. Tamiya has been really my go-to uh, so far. Again, I'm a beginner. Uh, I've done Ravel. Uh, where is it? Uh, I'm doing a, the USS Arizona. I'm in the middle of doing that. Uh, so that's my first Ravel product. Uh, I did just do a review of Ravel's M34 uh, tactical truck and off-road vehicle, which I'll, I'll link uh, towards the end of this video. Um, so, anyways, uh, I did pre-open this box just so I can make it easier for the video here. And uh, I took a glance at the instructions, but I haven't really looked at any of the parts yet. So, we're going to do that together. So again, model 19 uh, T, model T 1914 fire truck, uh, and it also comes with the the crew, two man crew. So uh, picked this up at uh, Andy's Hobby Headquarters in Arizona. I didn't go to Arizona buy it. I'm in New York, but uh, I ordered it online from him, and uh, uh, as well as a couple other kits. So uh, let's take a look. So opening it, this is a little different than what I'm used to. Um, usually it's a top opening or side opening box. This is a top opening with a lid. Okay, fight me. All right, here we go. So in addition to taking the top off, it opens this way. I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second. So here's your instructions. Um, uh, real quick off the, off the top here, it looks pretty straightforward. It's in multiple languages. I only speak one language, but it looks pretty straightforward, and we'll we'll go over that um, towards the end of the video. So each I shouldn't say each sprue, but the sprue for the crew members is completely separate. We'll take a look at this real quick. Um, right off the bat, I gotta say I'm pretty impressed with the, the screws. <clears throat> They're very clean. I'm not really seeing a lot of flash. I don't know if you can see on the arm, there's a seam that runs down the middle, which is fine. That's real easy to clean up. Not an issue there. But uh, you know what? Looking at these, They are numbered, so that's helpful. Um, AMT doesn't do that. Uh, looking at this real quick, compared to Ravel, these are really clean uh, as far as the connection points to whatever it is that you're going to be cutting off. They don't, uh, this reminds me of Tamiya's kits, actually. So I'm I'm pretty impressed with that. That's, that's kind of nice because that makes life a lot easier so you don't have to do as much cleanup. So that's for the crew members. Put that off to the side. All right, now there's a lot. There's a lot more parts in here than I thought there was. I don't know how many there are total. I don't know if it says. Hundred and twenty-seven parts. So based on what I've learned, if it's got that many parts. This is probably like a level four, maybe a level three. Um, so we're just going to go through in the pile here because I don't know, uh, you know, the order of what's going to happen here. So uh, looks like we got some water tanks, um, fire extinguishers. Looks like part of the seats. Um, Yep. 
looks like you know what those are not steering wheels I bet you those are the tops of uh, fire extinguishers because those old ones used to have those big valve wheels on it but I don't see it in the picture so that's what instructions are for so we will find out later what those are um, moving along here you got the uh, the Ford frame and it actually is Ford written on there I don't know if I can get the camera to focus on that but um, that's pretty cool nice texturing on here nice detail did a really nice job. I don't. I, again, I don't really see much that I'm going to have to clean up or sand, other than you know, a little bit on the edges when you you cut it off the sprue. Looks like the transmission, uh, engine. I always find it funny. They they put so much detail in these kits, to uh, for for like the engine and stuff, and you never see them because it's a closed closed hood. There might be an option for you to have maybe the side panel open for the engine cowl, but uh, I don't know. So, uh, moving along, we've got our, looks like that's going to be the PTO drive shaft, maybe for, I don't know if this has a water pump on it. I don't really know when that all came out. Um, exhaust system and uh, some other miscellaneous pieces here. Looks like they've got stuff mounted inside of the sprue for additional parts that looks like to be the fan um, some other fiddly little pieces but so that's that Ooh, again fancy little bit of a little bit of a mold issue here it looks like that all came apart probably in a the bag they're not as you saw they're not in separate bags so probably getting banged around and shipping and whatnot but um, you've got the Ford logo on the radiator, um, and some other things that I don't know what they are, but maybe I'll do a build video of this. I can figure out how to do that. In addition, if you haven't noticed, in addition to being a beginner modeler, I'm also a beginner YouTuber. This is my third video. Um, so, moving along, you got your wheels. Nice looking. Got a little bit. I, you know, it's. I find these interesting, these little tabs that they put on. I'm sure it's part of the molding process. Um, but I like those because you can put your gator clip on it to hold it so you can you know, paint it and not. Uh, not have to clip it directly on the part and go back and paint the part where the gator clip was so those are nice they didn't put them on this one though usually what i do is i'll leave a little bit of the sprue attached and then i'll clip it on there hang it out that way uh, and then you've got body panels and fenders here's the the bench seat that looks to be you know, I don't see it in the picture. This looks like it might be part for like a canopy. I'm not sure. We'll discover that later on. So another another something with the Ford logo on it. Uh, these are kind of neat actually. These are the wheels. They're rubber. They're very flexible. I'll be interested to see how those go on the rims themselves because they don't really have any groove lines. Not that I can show you on the camera, but they don't really have groove lines on here. So I'll be interested to see how those mount on there um, and how they stay. Might have to use some CA glue for that one, but these are cool. And I and I like that they're white. Um, in the picture, they've got them gray. Well, I, I say gray. Now that I look at it, it's it's probably like a, a rubber black. I might. I don't know. I wonder if I could tape those off and kind of give it like a white wall look. But that's kind of cool. 
get in the bag. Go to your home. All right. And last part of this kit is our clear plastic for our windshields. Uh, looks like headlight bezels. And whatever these things are, they're just little U channel looking pieces. But that's the fun of learning about it as you go. I don't know too much about uh, the Model T uh, to begin with, let alone a Model T fire truck. So I think this is going to be fun. Again, I'm pretty impressed with the sprues. They're they're clean. They they remind me of Tamiya. Uh, again, I've never built an ICM kit before, so let's see what happens. Uh, like I said in my other video, I don't read upside down, so bear with me here. Uh, you've got oof, a lot of different languages here. I only speak English, so uh, they put it in English, but they've got everything in kilograms and millimeters and kilometers, and I, I guess I'm just ignorant because I don't know the conversions to inches and feet and all that stuff, so... Uh, it's a Ford four-cylinder. Max speed is 70 kilometers an hour. I don't know what that is uh, in relation to it. But it. As far as like mile per hour and stuff like that. But, so they give you your sprue breakdown. Uh, you know, you got your, your A sheet, your B sheet, so on and so forth. Not sure why these are highlighted, but uh, we'll figure that out later on when I actually read the directions. Here's a sheet for guys. Put a lot of detail just for uh, just for the directions here. That's pretty cool because that that makes life a little bit easier. Interesting. Set that off. Uh, so they got you assembling the engine and. Uh, Looks like the, the transmission, or the drive, uh, yeah, tra <laughs> I can't talk today, sorry. Uh, your radiator, front uh, axle, mounting on there, mounting it to the bed. Again, I'm upside down, so it's a little goofy here. We've got just the buildup of the engine compartment, and bringing it all together. Your drive shaft and it looks like your rear suspension attaching off the transmission in the front. Oh, your exhaust system. Um, can't really tell what that is upside down here. Your uh, your front steering mechanism. I don't know that much about cars, so I'm sure that's probably not the right term for it, or there's a better term for it, but moving along. Looks like some type of stabilizer arm for the, the rear suspension. Oh, here you go, mounting the, the wheels into the tires. Looks like they just slide them in. I'll have to look to see what they recommend, if they recommend anything as far as the glue. <clears throat> you got some lanterns here. Oh, here's the engine cowl. They show them closed. I don't see an option to leave them open, but that would be, it'd be neat because you're going to spend a little bit of time building up that engine. It would be neat if you could leave it so you can see uh, the detail inside, but. I guess that's like most most of those kits. Moving along, uh, you got some. I think that's the windshield. Oh no, the uh, the tub for the seat gets mounted in there, and then that gets mounted right on the bed. I say bed. There's probably another term for it. Oh, looks like your your water tanks. Yep, there's the uh, those wheels that I was talking about. Those old style had those. Um, like globe valve type uh, handles on the back.
the uh, buildup of that. The mesh container, I'm assuming that's for the bed of the truck. I could be wrong. Oh, it's a basket. Oh, I guess for tools and stuff in the back. That gets mounted over top of the water tanks. Whatever that thing is. Oh, steering column, I guess. Yep, that's for the steering column. That goes in. Fire hose. Sits in the basket there. More lights. I'm guessing that's what those are, are lights. Ladders. I've never seen that in the kit. Oh, there they are. Right on the first sheet. Whatever that thing is. Yeah, these are lights. Got them. Right there. Got them on either side. Your main headlights. Toolbox. And just kind of putting all those together. There's your bell. Fire extinguishers getting mounted. Not really sure what that guy is. Learn more about the history of that. And then they give you a nice kind of finished product there to kind of show where everything goes. So I'm excited about building this. I think this should be a, a cool build. Here's your paint schemes. i got to get my hands on some fire engine red. The best I've got at this point is just Tamiya's X7 red. It is a gloss. I don't know. I have to do a test sample of that to see how it comes out. I like something shiny. That's what fire trucks are supposed to be. Uh, that's about it. So, again, ICM Model T 1914 fire truck with crew. Leave your likes and comments down below. Let's keep it civil, but uh, I hope everyone enjoys this video. And uh, we'll talk to you later.